Four out of 10 gay teenagers attempt suicide. Their drug and alcohol abuse rate is much greater than that of their heterosexual peers. These young people know no other way to deal with their honest self-expression. 21, the post-Stonewall generation, is intended to help foster the atmosphere of tolerance and understanding that is essential to free these young people from their isolation and shame. I always get very psyched up for these sort of things, you know, because, like, I do things I ordinarily don't do, like, you know, start yelling at the top of my lungs, and, you know, it, it, it felt really great because I got a lot of energy out, a lot of positive energy. And I remember at uh, 61st Street, a man came up to us and said, you people are sick. Hey, you son of a... You're marching Parker! with the nurse. You need to repent! The cat calls, the harassment, the people holding up rosaries, people yelling out, you are a, you are condemned to hell. During 1990, the percentage of bias-motivated crimes has jumped incredibly um, compared to last year. Bias-motivated crimes are up 91 percent. On a national level, and this is true locally as well, the bulk of violence committed against gay men and lesbians is verbal harassment, and that's the biggest chunk of two-thirds of the total number of cases reported. It's always the risk of someone's going to yell at you. Someone's going to call you a dyke or something. The old saying of sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's the biggest lie in the book. Names do hurt. Words do hurt. Sometimes the verbal harassment can be um, as psychologically harrowing as a physical assault, or even more so. Uh, if a person, and I, I've had clients who've called up saying that they are constantly on the way home passing the same corner of teenage boys who call them faggot or dyke, threaten to kill them. Last year I was the co-chairperson of the Columbia Gay and Lesbian Alliance, and I was quoted in the, in the school newspaper a lot, and this other guy was too. And we received a letter, um, a, pretty, a pretty brutal death threat to his mailbox um, addressed to both of us with a bullet attached. You know, I was a very good student at one point, and the harassment just got to a point where my grades went from a 90 to a 50. I couldn't function. I would go home, eat, watch TV. I put on 35 pounds in the course of four months. The fact that that happened and that I, I was so utterly shocked, I think, it, it, I was really freaked out for a week. You know, I couldn't go to class. I, I really didn't, I wasn't, I don't know what I did for that week, but whatever it was, it wasn't very constructive. These kids came in, seven or eight, 12 year olds, and um, two stopped right in front of us and said, so are you gonna kiss her? Come on, or whatever. And um, kind of squealing. And, and then they and the other kids they were with started screaming, lesbian, lesbian, um, like fire. So I was facing away from them. We were all in a fairly small area. And one of the kids behind me said, I didn't mean it. And I turned around and I said, what? And he said, I didn't mean it. And I said, you didn't mean what? And he said, that you're a lesbian. I said, well, I am. And there's nothing wrong with it. People think there is, but there's not. What's happening more and more are, are disparate members of that community are working together to change what is happening to the community so that it's really very empowering to realize that they are a community working together. And it's only as a community working together that we can affect any kind of change about the situation. I think especially this year it was found that the parade was 250,000 strong, which is the largest parade ever in New York City. And I always find it really incredible to see the diversity in the community. I mean, there's just like such diversity. 
not surprisingly, the same diversity you would find in any society. Um, and here we are coming together in terms of respecting each other's diversity and also with the goal of showing the world that we are here, we are entitled to equal treatment. People come from all over the country and uh, even all over the world to join in in this statement that uh, we are going to work together, we have our differences to stop the violence uh, so that we can walk around and uh, exercise the same rights as everybody else. Each year we know that more and more of us are coming out of the closet, more and more of us are able to proudly be a part of this celebration. I think it's also very important that every year the rest of New York, the rest of the country sees that there are hundreds of thousands of gay people all across the country, millions of people across the country who have no problem being gay, who see that as something to celebrate. And that's really what the parade is. It's a giant celebration.